colleague from Florida. I thank my colleague from the Rules Committee uh, for yielding me the time. And I also would like to refer to uh, my friend, and he is my good friend from Florida, who asks the question, why would the majority, uh, uh, quoting him, block legislation? My friend, when he was in the majority, um, uh, knows that I served on the committee with him for a number of years. And uh, I suffered the frustration of being in the minority, and perhaps that is what you suffer. Uh, but beyond that, I uh, have distinct recollections of even being on the Rules Committee and not even having my amendments made in order. So it is not only the general body, even the members of the Rules Committee, uh, it is the function and the way uh, that the House uh, works, and that is that the majority rules. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 915, the FAA Authorization Act of 2009, has been delayed for almost three years. This, in my opinion, is far too long for such a critical issue. Essential I increases in aviation funding and safety improvements have been allowed uh, to languish. Under the Bush administration, um, uh, there was another attempt made to approve this le legislation, but it was delayed yet again by the Senate. I believe the time has come for action. For years, I have fought, along with colleagues, for a new tower at Palm Beach International Airport. And yet, with all their infinite wisdom, the Federal Aviation Administration approved plans for a new tower that is under construction that is in abatement at this moment, but intends to strip the state-of-the-art TRACON radar out of Palm Beach International and move it to Miami. Um, uh, by placing all of South Florida's major radar functions in Miami, the FAA is creating an extremely dangerous scenario, especially in light of the fact uh, that Florida is vulnerable to hurricanes and has been designated as a high-risk urban area. If a hurricane were to barrel through Miami-Dade County and damage MIA's control tower and subsequent radar system, as Hurricane Andrew did, then it's highly possible, indeed likely, that emergency efforts in Palm Beach and South Florida could be dramatically hindered. The FAA's contingency plan would require <clears throat> that controllers in Jacksonville, an airport more than 350 miles away, direct approaching aircraft not only in their assigned region, <coughs> excuse me, but throughout all of South Florida and virtually the entire state without additional staff and technology. For my constituents, H.R. 915 contains a provision that I consider very important and worked hard to make sure that it was included. I thank Chairman Overstar and Subcommittee Chair uh, Costello and especially their staffs for the extraordinary work that they've done on this overall bill, and I'm deeply appreciative that they included this language, and I hope the FAA gets it. The administrator of the Federal Aviation Administration shall take such actions as may be necessary to ensure that any air traffic control tower or facility placed into operation at Palm Beach International Airport after September 30th, 2009, to replace an air traffic control tower or facility placed into operation before September 30th, 2009, includes an operating terminal radar approach control. Um, it creates a process to ensure that these realignment efforts are properly reviewed and reevaluated and evaluated, and that stakeholders are involved throughout the entire process. This will help ensure that realignment decisions are not arbitrary, nor are they made with only financial considerations taken into account. I yield the gentleman an additional two minutes. The I thank my colleague for very additional much. two minutes. Throughout my career, rarely have I seen a federal agency as dysfunctional, unorganized, or downright incompetent certainly totally irres uh, well, irresponsible as it pertains to this issue and unresponsive to mine and the efforts of others um, uh, to see to it uh, that this matter is uh, concluded in a positive manner. 
um, uh, they, the way that they function under uh, the Bush administration certainly is not to be admired. For years, I've been fighting the FAA to stop the consolidation and realignment of South Florida air traffic control facilities and the same holds for other areas of the country where appropriate studies are needed or before such decisions are taken. As my constituents know, I take this very personally. Simply put, the lives of millions of people all across this country are in the hands of air traffic controllers every single day. I'm sorry, but we can't play politics with one's personal safety. My good friend from Florida referenced the air traffic controllers. On Monday, I received, as before, um, um, Mr. Overstar and Mr. Costello, their Sentinel of Safety Award. And I thank my friends uh, that are Na National Air Traffic Control uh, Association members, particularly um, uh, those uh, uh, that uh, have worked with me on this uh, project, uh, Mitch and Shane, um, others in the area, and my uh, former staff person, David Goldenberg, I would like to uh, shout out to him and thank he and Alex Johnson on my staff for the extraordinary work that they played. I urge the adoption of this rule and the passage of the underlying legislation. And I would ask my friend from Florida, since he, like me, is a fan of the National Air Traffic Control Association, if he supports their quality of life issues and increased and appropriate pay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.